I'm going to read a quote from The Anarchist's Guide to Travel. If you pursue this method of travel, you'll be dirtier, colder, hotter, hungrier, wetter, more tired, and more miserable at times than you could ever have imagined in your previous life. It's interesting to think how the culture has evolved in the past century. Over a hundred years of riding freight trains, what started as a Depression-era way of getting around looking for work before hitchhiking was prevalent, has now transformed into a handful of people drifting around, often trying to avoid any sort of work in general. So where does that leave us today? I'm rolling southbound through New Jersey on a high wall grainer, one of the best rides you can get. It's summer 2020, and at this point, around 40 million people nationwide have just lost their jobs from the coronavirus pandemic. There are massive protests in big cities across America. It looks like the second Great Depression has begun, and I'm riding coast to coast across America by freight train. After a long wait in New Jersey, I took the train out to Philly, where I made a brief stop to catch up with friends there. See that skipper? Look at that one! I got some Chinese food from a local spot and had that as my lunch for the next leg of my trip. train is going through Baltimore right now, and once it gets there, it stops for a few hours. Alright, brakes just started to hiss. We're going nowhere fast, so I'm going to use this opportunity to cook some rice. after about two hours, so it's going to get moving uh, soon. It's already creaking, as you can hear. Uh, it's going to crawl through this super busy yard, so I'm going to try to just pad out all my stuff. <laughs>
years of industrial nowhere we're going through. It's so remote. And this is the kind of stuff I would love to see during the daytime. I'm sure it's beautiful. But I can tell even at night that the landscape is incredible. It's really uh, only a lived experience, but I'm feeling right now. And it itself feels like art. Around 1 a.m., we made our stop in Richmond, a city that I knew nothing about before this trip. But, down for the adventure, that's where I hopped off. This is the sleep spot for the night. A little more uh, sketchy, I guess, than I'm used to. So this is Richmond, Virginia, where I've ended up trying to get a spot out by the river where I can um, clean myself up because my hands look fucking disgusting and take a dip there maybe clean my uh, clothes right now the goal is to get water because I've got no more water a gallon is not enough for the day remember kids don't get a job and you'll never have to work a day in your life uh, I pass by small cities like this and I wonder if they're dead naturally or just because of current times on this little chill spot under the railroad tracks and gonna uh, eat some breakfast here first then wash up a little bit Heavy southern rainstorm. Yo, what's good? This is Aaron. We've just been chilling for the past, uh, what, like, a couple hours. Couple hours. Yeah, we got rained on like mad hard. Yeah, that was, there was that rainstorm. That was the last thing I filmed. And then we were just talking under the rail bridge. And then. He turns out to be a really cool guy, and now we're just kicking it. Looking down uh, downtown right now. Making my way downtown. Yep. Faces past, eating ass on a homebound. Yep. So there's a statue that was graffiti down here, and there was a group of white supremacists that had guns. Holy shit. And they were cleaning it, and they said, if anyone tries to fuck this, we'll shoot you. so much heavy shit but I'm kind of getting used to carrying it now and I'm trying to see Monument Avenue apparently like all the, the Robert E. Lee monument and all the like confederate statues are like tagged up and totally like fucking destroyed which would be really cool to see they removed that whole statue <laughs> I cut myself climbing up here because of all the broken glass. I'm gonna have to check that later. Plenty of times out here, we done got into it. If we get an argument, if we had to draw guns, we could argue it out a little bit. We could tussle it out a little bit, and we all back out here today. this uh to this train yard in small town virginia that's one of the entrances to it i 
feels like 107 degrees according to the forecast. Yeah, this train situation kind of sucks. There are very few cars that stop right exactly here. And when they do, there's always some worker vehicle parked up next to it. Okay, someone's finally coming by. Please, please, for the love of God, just stop here. And then I'll get on and then we'll get the fuck out of here. So I've been stuck here at this small town yard for a couple of days. Nothing going through really stops for very long. Okay, it just got dark. Heavy breeze coming in, which means that we are due for a friggin' thunderstorm or something. And I'm not in a good place to be when it comes to thunderstorms, so I'm gonna have to eat my soup and get the fuck out of here real soon. If one of these trees explodes, I'm fucked, so I gotta get out. in the distance look like they're running like fucking hell from me <laughs> as if I'm the one to worry about. Think about this, part of your paycheck is given to the government for the military to find the most efficient way to kill someone. Blackface. You should exploit immoral systems to your advantage. And that includes trains doing things like propping up the petrochemical industry, destroying the environment. So I can't change the system alone, but what I can do is react to it and take advantage of it in a way that benefits me. Blackface. Rich people spend literal billions of dollars convincing us capitalism is the best system. They're rich while you work for them. Is your work fulfilling? Is it helping society advance, or is it helping a few people get richer? Blank face. 
I don't think money is necessarily an ideal to strive for or an evil to be avoided, but I do believe you're most likely more valuable than what you're getting, uh, either from your job or from the government. Blackface. 50 years in the future, the police will continue to be a force for brutality and oppression. Blackface. I have a lot to say about this stuff. I do a lot of thinking about it. What else are you going to do under a bridge while waiting for a train? Thinking about this life and the people you're meeting now, contrasting it with what happened before. I have to say though, a lot of the people I'm meeting now are a hell of a lot more interesting. That's the thing with trains, it's so calm at first and then you have to run and spring into action. Yeah, normally I wouldn't be so jumpy and ready to roll, but it's just that I know the right train comes by at around this time. Holy shit, dude. I almost died of heat exhaustion just trying to get on this stupid train, and now it's blowing me by. I had a 15 minute grace period where I could kind of walk up and down the cars and try to find something. So I'm running around in this swampy, humid air. My glasses are fogging up to the point where I can see better without them than with them, and they're just becoming a burden. I'm carrying my three things, my guitar, uh, case full of guitar and other stuff, um, my bag of food and water, and my heavy-ass pack of camping shit. Um, and I'm like sweating like a motherfucker, pretty much dying of heat exhaustion, trying to find a good car, climbing up all of them, uh, hitting up my flashlight, and every car is just suicide, 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 suicide. But, yeah, I'm fucking drenched. I'm pretty much <laughs> feeling the heat exhaustion. I know for a fact that there are more trains that they send out, but this is the, I'm almost certain, the train that's going to Chicago. That was probably the most intense, like, physical thing I've done in, God, I don't know how fucking long running up and down this train hoping it doesn't like suddenly start sliding away without me because these things get up to speed fast like you're on them one second and then the next you're going at 5 10 15 miles an hour okay that was the fucking process i know it looks like i'm running through marijuana plants right now um, yeah it's just in the intermodal facility a bunch of huge fucking scary trains there and i couldn't really tell which train was mine. So anyway, I'm tired as fuck. Gonna camp out here. Okay, so after a good 24 hours here, that have been uneventful, just kind of camping out. Some car rolled by down that way. There's a parking lot over there. I don't know if he saw me, if he was maintenance or whatever. And then down this way, I saw a guy in an orange vest. So he could have been looking for me or something. Um, but my stuff is pretty well hidden, it's pretty subtle. Um, and I don't know that he saw me. But yeah, this place is kind of hot during the day, I guess. So I'm just waiting for nighttime again, because I could sneak around last time during night. This mofo is pulling up. I don't like that there's still daylight, but at least I sort of know what to do. If I can stay hidden, uh, if only it was nighttime, but I'll try my best to try to get a ride and stay hid. You know, it's funny, I wanted to do this in the summer when I could see everything and I would have good daylight, but now I really appreciate the value of night and being able to sneak around in a way that I just can't in the daytime without being super conspicuous. Okay, just made my way off of that thing. Um, it was a little nerve-wracking, one, because we went straight through the center of the city, and two, because I've heard that the yard here is very hot and just this general area is very hot so very lucky that 
nothing has happened. I managed to hop out at kind of the right place and time, uh, despite, you know, workers, rail cops, people driving to work, etc. So, luckily the yard itself was kind of quiet. Didn't want to blow through here not knowing when my next stop would be. I would rather resupply here. Um, even though I should be, I would have been good on food and water for another day, but might as well see where I'm at. Okay, despite having both hands free, I totally slid down. That freaking thing, as you can tell by all the grime on my left side. Try to walk around, find a better path, better camp spot than right by the tracks, because that's just way too sus. So, try to set up camp here. Might even have my knife on me, because not really liking the vibe of this place as much as other spots like down by the river. Um, if I do end up here. But again, I still have maybe a couple minutes to look before I just get fucking dead tired. Okay, good news is I made it down to the river. Bad news is it's still pretty exposed uh, to the people passing by over there by that park. So I could just hope that they won't care. It's a little sketch. One thing I will say though is the thing about being down by the river is I have a spot to wash my stuff, dry my stuff, store my stuff potentially. Um, although the latter, again, it's a little sketchy, so I would have to hide it pretty well. So yeah, I think this is the vibe for the, the night, so to speak. Okay, not sure the last time I updated, but I'm chilling here. Um, very relaxing kind of spot by the river. Good spot to wash myself up and then also wash my stuff, which has gotten significantly dirty. Um, yeah, and I think I'm going to be chilling here for like a few days. If I don't like it, I guess I can always get the fuck out. Uh, but I figure the point of traveling is um, rather than just bouncing around from place to place you might as well stay in a place for a little while and see what's up uh, I mean potentially I can see everything that this place has to offer in a day two three but I don't know yet because I haven't been out there yet so we'll see what it's looking like this is one of those places where I would have again never stopped would have never thought about um, until the moment I'm there, you know, my life circumstances would have never led me to this place except right now, it's just totally random where I'm at, so that's kind of the beauty of it, not knowing where you're going to end up, or, have, or knowing it, but not knowing anything about it and discovering it. Just crossed that river, but doesn't mean anything if you haven't seen me do it, so I'm going to do it again with just one hand, because uh, one has to be holding the GoPro. And got a little laundry tree set up. All the blisters on my feet don't help. problem with being out here is the current is a little stronger by the shore for some reason and all the rocks are definitely like so jagged and painful. Found a pretty good place to stash my stuff. You can't see it from the river, you can't see it from here, you can't see it from the tracks. It's behind the bush over there so you have to climb up the steep hill and be really suicidal to try to even get it. So, pretty confident about that spot. Gonna take out my trash and um, 
and then try to find a place to charge up my shit. And that's how it goes. Not a whole lot going on around here. Okay, so actually it's a little busier here than I gave it credit for when people are just in the downtown area chilling. So, you never know what you're gonna get based on the connections that you make because there was this dude hanging out I noticed the squatters rights tattoo on his hand so we started talking about trains and I gave him a dollar I lit his cigarette and homeboy comes out and gives me a big ass whole plate of wings from the restaurant across the street which is I mean more than the best fucking deal ever um, so I've got to go and like get cigarettes or something and give him <laughs> something or maybe because that's just it feels almost unfair i guess it i'm a dirty ass little fucking train hopping kid fucking sitting on the streets fucking roanoke at the moment drinking a beer my brother fucking bought me i've been through all 48 continental states i've seen the dirtiest and the cleanest fucking shit you could ever fucking see and i still come back to anywhere there's a gutter that's where I belong, on these streets. This traveling shit, you get to see anything you can. You get to see more than what your normal folk get to see. You're hopping trains, you're hitchhiking. You get to see shit that the normal society doesn't see. I don't know if you know what bum spray is. Just like in a bum just fucking drop his pants and just spray shit all over the wall. And the beautiful was Oregon. Um, I get to see the redwoods. I get um, you get to see nature. A month and a half, two months ago, I just got out the wheelchair. That's from getting stabbed in the spine. That's why I can't jump the fucking trains anymore. Not yet. I'm working on it. I'm walking. I'm out that damn chair. And I'll be back on them trains as soon as I can be. Because to me, there is no other life. Living on these streets, hopping them trains and seeing what you do. You, know. you got these people, man. They want to take their road trips, ride the highways and shit. Paying their fucking rent. Paying their fucking insurance. Paying all this shit. They think they get to see the road. Oh, man. You hop these trains. You hitchhike. You bug go these fucking trails, you're going to see things that nobody else gets to see. That is fucking That's insane. Like, I feel the heat from here. That's a beautiful smell. It's just hot. My shit just got stuck to the ground, I swear to God. Dude, that shit is crazy. Look at the light. So right now I got this slow ass cold train blocking my path to the river. Uh, but so long as he doesn't slow down, we should be good. Okay, there's the end of it. And then I'm gonna try to hit that Chicago bound train early in the morning. Gotta wake up at 4 a.m. to even try to catch it. So that's how it goes. Well, I just dropped my fucking mac and cheese trying to get down here and it exploded all across the floor. So there goes two bucks and my lunch so i'll just have to make something that i got Ugh. feeling pretty tired even though it's only about 7 p.m but i guess that's a good thing because um i have to wake up at four to catch this train anyway possibly earlier but i think it's going to roll in later honestly this trip i never intended to go down through the south but now that I got my sweet tea in hand, cool breeze, little spot by the river, I don't mind it. Okay, so this is not at all a good ride. There's like barely any space by the grill to hide. There's this piece of equipment here. So, I can barely even duck down if it comes to that. 
to stopping here. I think I got a resupply. I guess I could have rode it all the way to Chicago, but fuck it. But for now, time to walk into town. It's about a mile uh, in this direction. And up myself on water, get some food. Holy shit, I was on that train for 24 hours, not even kidding you. And wow. It was loud as fuck. My ears are kind of feeling weird right now. My legs are feeling weird right now. Part of me wishes I just stayed on till Chicago, but fuck it. This is part of the adventure, right? Going to these different places. 
places not knowing what's there, not knowing how things are going to end up. So I guess I can't regret it. This is kind of what I wanted. <laughs> So I'm just sitting at the gas station drawing in my sketchbook and a uh, guy comes up and just gives me about $10 or so, uh, which I would have never expected uh, out here. Well, I, I guess I don't know what to expect here, but it comes back to uh, the conversation I had with the guy Hopper. He said the road will give you back uh, 10 times as much as you give and that's quite literally true and that I gave him a dollar a beer some water and this guy comes up gives me 10 bucks so I guess it is kind of true and it just makes me want to pay it back you know pay it forward because uh, again I've, I've gotten so much good road karma going to try to head to a better spot, supposedly a better spot, uh, walk through downtown first and maybe catch a bus. And of course I just had to choose the hottest fucking time of day to make my trek. I'm gonna take a little breather. Right now just waiting on the bus trying to take me to the other side of the yard. Hopefully can catch something going to Chicago. I'm lucky. This is a nice spot. Very clean. No mosquitoes for some reason. And I hear a train honking. Let's just hope that it stops where I want it to. Um, a bit west of here and then I can make my way down the train. And then I can find a decent ride. Fingers crossed. Someone just drove by, probably just a work truck, but always good to keep a low profile. I already cut all the straps off my backpack, just so I don't have a Stove the Hobo related incident. Uh, for those of you who are unaware, Stove was a uh, prolific train rider who died at about in his 30s, presumably because when he was in Baltimore, one of his uh, straps of his backpack got caught against the train. Also, he liked to ride drunk, so I feel like that may have been a factor as well. So, you've got to be really careful with that shit. That's why I don't drink and ride, nor do I condone it. Got to stay 100% on my game. water, but luckily it's a fairly short ride to Chicago, if this is going to Chicago, which I hope it is. Yeah, starting to look like there's nothing you can even ride, so I ain't even mad, because I was going to continue my way uh, east to try to find a different spot. Yeah, it looks like we're at the end of the train. It's just all auto cars. The problem too with some of the information about trains now is that trains are much shorter due to lack of demand, depressed economy, uh, virus concerns. So the usual rules, I think, don't always really apply. I'm gonna use this train as cover to make my way down the tracks a little more. Just saw the lights of a motherfucking work truck pop up from behind me, so I had to dip out here. Guarantee you he saw me, but at least he won't see me if I'm up here. Oh shit. I would never believe I'm in Indiana such virginal land. This is what the place used to look like. This is the one.
be a little superfluous to be strapped here, but it is Chicago and it is 4 a.m. and I don't know the area and anything goes. So again, not that Chicago is like this awful, horrible place, but you know, anything can happen and I just don't know the area. So gotta keep that thing on me. So it sure it smells bad in a kind of damp, kind of moldy sort of way. So I might have to do some laundry. It's time to wash up, I would say, in something that's not just a river. And I, I mean, I guess that's far for the course to expect to smell pretty bad, but I don't want to have to smell myself. Okay, just spent about three hours napping in the park, laid out my sleeping pad and fell asleep. I just needed to catch up on all the sleep that I, I totally missed last night, because I honestly got into Chicago a little fast. So my shoes are starting to get so torn up, they look like absolute shit, and you know, that's nothing new but I'm starting to feel self-conscious about it. Uh, so I seriously need to get new shoes. Some sketchy shit right here. something that I used to appreciate so much many summers ago when I was out every day and I feel like I've kind of lost touch with lately because I've been not really waking up and sleeping with the sun which is okay you know you can't force the schedule but I've been kind of uh, waking up late back home and just usually being pretty busy during sunset hours and I haven't really had time to appreciate the sunset and its beauty. I hop out of Chicago that night, but the train I take stops in the suburbs, and I realize I must have taken the wrong thing. Lots of traversing through industrial sites trying to get to where I need to go. I don't like it one bit. Sunrise, I only slept two hours, so... Hopefully I get a better amount of sleep when I'm at the catch out. I never thought I would be so happy to see a fucking parking lot, but this shit just means public space. And I see the train station up ahead, so things are going to be all right. Honestly, crossing through these places, I know people see me. They probably overwork themselves and don't want to do shit about it, but I'm just here to get the fuck out as soon as I can. That would have been my train. There's this guy on YouTube, She or Shy, and he, he does a lot of adventures around uh, Lithuania and other places, usually around Eastern Europe. And he always says like, fuck, I'm on one hour of sleep, two hours of sleep, or some shit like that. I'm like, dude, get some sleep. <laughs> but but yeah, I totally understand uh, now that I'm out here on the road, that's not always a luxury you can afford. Um, sometimes there's just so much going on and you've just got to be ready to up and go. Yeah, this is the hop out I was out uh, last night. You can see things a little better in the daylight. But yeah, really hooked it up here. 
pots, cast iron pans, tarp, buckets, whole bunch of shit. Now what I don't like is that there's a whole ass work of vehicle down there. He might not care, but still, I would ideally prefer not to be seen and or bothered. One train just pulled that way, one train's pulling in here, middle train has stopped, there's a locomotive up that way, there's another stalled train up that way, work truck is right there, so this is like a really, really tough time to be trying to do what I'm trying to do and to have to run and get water and to not realize that I didn't have water until right now and knowing that my train is going to leave very soon. So it looks like the train's still kind of stuck up there, so what I'm going to do is uh, go for this break in traffic, try to cross the street, and try to make my way back to my site without even being um, seen by the work truck. Damn, this side is busy as fuck. It's bushwhacking time. I am not looking forward to this. The moment it gets thorny, I am out. Ugh, it's already getting thorny. I think these spiky plants are only a small portion of uh, the plants that are here. So let's pray that that's the case. Sorry, plants. Oh, damn it. These things hurt. It's not just the flowers that are spiny, it's the whole stem. I'm quite actually in over my head here. My arms are maybe seven or eight feet high, and I'm just like rolling through them, trying to get to where I think is the right spot. Holy shit. Pretty sure this shit is my ride out of here. Oh my god! Well, fuck the X Games, this is the extreme sport right here. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. 
fuck. I'm taking my flashlight out. This is too scary. What? You being you, you being right behind me doesn't help. <laughs> So getting in here, there was not a ladder before this. We had to climb up this way. And some kids came by and they put the ladder over here. time to head out again. This time I got food and water for about two, three days because I know I'm going to be out on this thing for a long, 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 long time. So I think I'm just going to climb up this mountain and see what's going on. Tons of grasshoppers and shit flying around. I don't know if you can see it. The train's right there. Probably the highest point in town. All right, campsite for the night. We got permission to be here, uh, which is pretty dope. Cops rolled up earlier and we were like, yeah, dude, we have permission to actually be here um, from the property owner, which was really cool. And I don't know why I'm getting a video of this because it's not like you can smell it, but that porta potty over there smells absolutely amazing. Again, this kind of makes no sense because you're not going to pick it up on video, 
but I'm just gonna like put my head in and like try to describe it to you. I'm not even joking, like I'm not trolling at all. Like this is genuinely, it smells good. Like, like it's, it smells like lemon. It smells like super fresh, like all Febrezed out as if like no one uses it, as if it gets like cleaned out regularly and constantly. Um, and I'm just, I'm kind of amazed. I've literally never smelled a porta potty with that kind of like cleanliness before. It's insane. Yeah, anyway, we're just camped out at hoping to get out of here sometime in the dark hours where we're not gonna be bothered. Yeah, dude, this town blows. So many Karens and all that. Most people, I mean, some people are okay and nice and friendly, and then others will just like call the cops on you for being near their property or whatever. And it's fucked up because there's like no place to go, really. Um, there's like no shade anywhere, there's no like public space, it's all private land, so it's super fucked. Just kind of doing musical chairs. Yeah, seriously, August. I'm like, what? Like, uh, your mask isn't even on though. Like, it was like. Okay, so what's going on is that old lady, uh, well, I guess not old, but older uh, lady who just gave us a ride to the park dropped me off right here in the back of this building, which is real nice and subtle. I think there might be a train rolling through soon. Since it's just me heading out, it feels a lot more subtle and a lot more, uh, like, sneaky. Alright, this might be my ticket out. <laughs>
good four hours or so, so fuck it. I'm gonna start making pasta. about seven hours of standing still we're finally moving again jeez dude anyway i'm gonna stay hidden through the yard As the sun set in Idaho, I realized this was my second consecutive night on the train. After everything, I was on that train for 39 hours straight. Come
Looks like I'm carrying a big jug of piss around with me. <laughs> Got my supplies up. Now it's just a long waiting game. Alright, so far it's been slow as hell. Nothing's come by. Just been reading and sketching for the past few hours. Just waiting part of the game, but I'm almost there. I'm almost at the coast. My little hiding crevice. Finally made it out to Seattle. Everything is abandoned or tagged to shit. Um, I mean, that is kind of every big city everywhere. The problem with nothing being open is that I don't really have a place to charge my stuff, which is super annoying. It's time to go home. Time to see what's going on there. It's an economic depression all around the country, though. I feel like big cities are really feeling the worst of it from what I'm seeing. So. I don't know, I don't know how things are gonna play out. Just saw someone shoot heroin uh, in front of me a couple minutes ago, so that's cool. Tough thing will be finding a safe place to stay, but fingers crossed, I'll figure it out. I always do. All right, y'all are not gonna believe this shit. Guy came up, got me shoes. They're nice, and they're the right size. Fucking amazing. Now I can throw these pieces of shit away. Didn't capture the exact moment of me throwing those in the trash, but damn, that felt good. I'm catching the first bus in the morning just to catch my flight back. I'm tired. I'm gonna watch the sunrise. I'm definitely gonna sleep on the ride back. About to hit the reset button on my whole life and just uh, go back to things as they were. Don't really want to, but you know, better to 
end the trip right now at a uh, at a decent time when I still want to be traveling rather than when I've just overstretched myself so yeah and if I had to be anywhere for a couple days to end the trip this is not a bad spot to be at all real nice and peaceful in the morning yeah so I made it here didn't die didn't get arrested ticketed whatever and I'm safe I'm in good spirits I know it doesn't look like it I probably look like shit right now but I actually feel pretty decent and kind of uh, kind of can't even believe that I just made it 4,000 miles across the United States by rail. It adds up. So on the day-to-day, -day, you don't notice it. And then you look back and you realize you've gone 4,000 miles. And you're like, whoa. How, how did that happen? Anyway, I think my bus is coming, so I'll see you guys later.